character selection screen of every Super Smash Bros. title is always something that sparks excitement among fans, more so before the game's release than after. Since Super Smash Bros. Melee, character icons on the CSS have always used new artwork created specifically for the game. However, despite having original cartoon-like artwork, which can be seen on the box art or in the manual, the character select screen for the original Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 64 opted to use official artwork of the characters from their original series instead. While I cannot verify a reason for this, one theory is that it was not a priority to make unique CSS icons for the fighters, and so it simply never happened. A more likely reason, however, is that this was done to make the characters more recognisable. Remember that this was the first Smash game, so fans of these characters would only know them from their original Source games. My name is Nantendrex, and today I thought it would be fun to look at the artwork they used for the original Super Smash Bros. CSS, as well as the game's intro, as they share this artwork with the exception of the unlockables, and identify where the artwork came from originally. Not all of the characters have major changes, but the ones that do have very interesting changes, and we'll look at the reasons for why we think this might have happened. So, let's start this all off with Nintendo's main man himself, Super Mario. Mario's artwork was one of the easiest to identify because it's essentially a perfect match with its original counterpart. This is of course from Super Mario 64, the latest Mario platformer at the time of Super Smash Bros. release. The colours are slightly lighter in the Super Smash Bros. version, which is a common theme you'll find across all of these CSS portraits. This artwork was lightly chosen as Mario 64 was the latest game at the time and many of the Mario themed assets in Super Smash Bros, such as Mario's model or Mario's stage, Peach's Castle, come from that game. Now we look at the King of the Jungle, Donkey Kong, and his artwork isn't taken from the latest game, but from easily one of the most influential, and that's the first Donkey Kong Country game on the SNES. Just like the Mario render, it is pretty much a perfect match, except for a touch up to the fur in the Smash Bros version. The reason for the artwork coming from Donkey Kong Country, rather than say the first Donkey Kong game, is because this was the first time that this version of Donkey Kong had ever appeared. You know, our favourite tie-wearing, Kremlin stomping ape. Yeah, this is his first game. The reason for this is most likely twofold. Much like with Mario, the DK stage Congo Jungle is based on the same game as the render, Donkey Kong Country. The second reason is most likely due to the fact that despite being the titular hero, Donkey Kong is only playable in the first Donkey Kong Country title, as Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong took his place in the sequels. It therefore makes more sense to use a render of Donkey Kong from when he was playable, rather than from when he was a simple NPC. Link's artwork is clearly based on The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The render itself is pretty accurate, but there are some slight differences, most notably the nose and eyebrows. Ocarina of Time was the latest Zelda game at the time of the original Super Smash Bros, and it is because of this that Link's character model and the stage, Hyrule Castle, as evident by the background elements of that level, are based on it. However, both the stage, the model and the render are not 100% accurate, and while this may just be a purposeful edit made by Sakurai, I believe there is a better reason. Zelda content in Super Smash Bros. for 64 is inaccurate because the two games were made simultaneously. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time came out four months before the original Super Smash Bros., and by the time of its release, everything would have been finalised for Smash. Sakurai has previously stated that the reason why Adult Link has a boomerang in Smash, when he cannot use one in Ocarina of Time, is because he did not know of this fact, and other details of Ocarina of Time's development during the development of his own game. Due to all of this, I believe Sakurai was basing the Link character model and render from beta artwork of Link rather than anything final. This one I'm showing on screen right now is the most accurate to Link's final render that I could find, as the nose is smaller and not nearly as pointy, just like in Smash. Coming up next we have everyone's favourite bounty hunter, Samus, and her artwork is based on her design from Super Metroid, but has been edited to look more like a 3D render, in order to match with all the others. This effect is used by all the remaining renders with the exception of Fox and possibly Luigi, but he is a special case. 
Super Metroid was the latest game released in the Metroid series at this time, as the Nintendo 64 never saw a Metroid game get released, or even go into actual development. Much like the stage for the previous fighters, the Metroid stage Planet Zebes is based on Super Metroid, as evidenced by the sprites in the background, like Ridley and the Wavers. Yoshi's render breaks the mold from all the characters we've seen thus far. As most of the content in Super Smash Bros. 64 is based on Yoshi's story, I originally thought the artwork was from there, but I couldn't find a match. It was then that I decided to look back, and in doing so, discovered that this artwork is in fact from the original Yoshi's Island. Specifically, it first appeared on the manual that came with all copies of the Japanese game. Yoshi himself is crowded around by different colours of various other Yoshis, but the one in the centre is green. Annoyingly, he's red on the box, so it threw me off for a bit, but I eventually found it. Just like with Samus, the only difference is that the 3D effect has been added to the 2D artwork and all the other Yoshis have been removed. I mean, that's you can't have the, all these different colours blocking off the roster screen after all. I'm going to skip over Kirby for now and instead go straight to Fox, whose artwork comes from Star Fox 64, which is unsurprising, as pretty much every element in Super Smash Bros. about Fox is taken from that game, such as Sector Z, its stage. However, there are two slight odd differences between Fox's artwork and his eventual render. The first is a bit difficult to say with full confidence, but it does not appear as though Fox's arms are crossed in the Smash render like they are in the original. I believe this is because his red scarf is more visible in the Smash render, however I cannot say that for sure, as his arms might just be slightly lower for this one, and are being cut off by the CSS icons. Or maybe they're not folded at all. The second oddity is more obvious though, the silver part of his helmet that you can see at the top of his head, in between his ears, while clearly visible in his original artwork, is completely missing in the Smash Bros. version. It is not like his model had that part of the helmet removed, so I can only assume that it was done here on purpose so as to stop the grey from clashing with his name as they appear in a similar colour. So Pikachu's artwork was a bit of a pain to find. Despite being the mascot of the series, he doesn't appear on any of the boxes, except for Pokemon Yellow, so originally I thought that he might have originated from the trading card game, which has artwork for almost every Pokemon. But as I looked into it, I discovered that this artwork was in fact used in Korokoro Koro magazine in order to advertise specifically Pokemon Blue, as the original red and green artwork of Pikachu was a lot fatter than this one. Now we move on to the unlockables, and Jigglypuff gave me a similar problem to that of Pikachu. Originally, I thought Jigglypuff's artwork might have been based from the anime. However, I discovered that that official artwork is based on another piece of artwork from Pokemon Red and Green, specifically first seen in the strategy guide. You can tell it's this one because of the blue eyes that Jigglypuff shares, whereas in the anime, they're green. I wanted to mention one new thing with Jigglypuff that applies to all the unlockable characters found in the game. Earlier I showed a clip from the intro of the game, which included a full render of the four unlockable fighters in Super Smash Bros, and I wanted to address their models within this video as well. Although not technically a part of the CSS, the models are very similar, and so I felt it was worth covering. The Jigglypuff render is pretty much identical, except much better quality in the opening, and the same goes for Ness, so I'll be discussing him later. Captain Falcon on the other hand... On the character select screen, Captain Falcon's artwork is based on his appearance in F-Zero X, the latest title in the F-Zero series. His appearance in the original F-Zero is very different to the one we all know and love. The render for Captain Falcon is pretty much identical to his F-Zero X artwork, although the Smash Bros. version appears to be darker in colour, which made it a lot harder to confirm, especially when you compare him to the render used in the intro movie. Unlike Jigglypuff and Ness, Captain Falcon actually has a completely different pose for his opening render, I have no idea why this is. The pose he is in with the finger salute seems to be based on his infamous show your moves taunt that originated here in Super Smash Bros, as the pose is identical. This is rather amusing, as it is this pose that will go on to be used as the official Captain Falcon pose in both F-Zero GX and Brawl, arguably his most iconic pose. It just goes to show really how much of Captain Falcon as a character was defined by his appearance in Super Smash Bros. Now on to Ness, and 
To the surprise of no one, his official artwork comes from Earthbound, the only game he's actually in. And it's definitely his most iconic pose. There's not really a whole lot to say about this render, as it falls in line with all the others like Mario and Donkey Kong, where it's essentially spot on except for a few touch-ups done here and there to make the colour brighter. Even his intro render is just a high quality version of his CSS render as I mentioned earlier. With that out of the way, we have covered all the characters whose renders were pretty straightforward, but as you might have noticed, there are still two fighters left to cover, Kirby and Luigi. These two each have something unique about their CSS render that made me decide that I needed to keep them separate from the others. While all the renders so far can be traced back to one particular source, the renders for both Kirby and Luigi are instead original. So, first I will start with Kirby. Originally, I was fully committed to just accepting this as an original render based on Kirby's adventure, until Nerbion, our resident Kirby fanatic, sent me this picture. He believes that the render matches up perfectly with the sword Kirby artwork from Kirby Superstar. Just with all the sword aspects removed, and Kirby's expression changed from angry to what we have in Smash. When you mirror the artwork, everything matches up, from the placement of the hands to more importantly, the placement of the foot that kept plaguing me in my own research. I now believe that this is the real source of the artwork, although it is still an original render, as any sign of the sword ability has been removed, the image has been flipped, tilted, and Kirby's expression has been changed. Now finally, we come to Luigi. We've been saving Mario's player 2 until the very end because he has a huge issue. While Kirby seems more like an edit of an already existing piece of artwork, Luigi's is 100% unique. The render used in his CSS bears a lot of resemblance to the one seen in the intro sequence, with two exceptions. Luigi's hand is not extended in his CSS icon, and his eyes are facing a different direction, facing the top left rather than the top right. Despite this, his CSS icon is clearly using a slightly edited version of his intro render as the head shape and colours are identical. Due to this, I am going to identify what went into designing the intro render instead. In all my research, I found two pieces of artwork that seem to match up, one of which doesn't even belong to Luigi. The first piece of artwork is from Mario Kart 64. I believe this is the artwork used to design Luigi's head. As Luigi did not appear in Super Mario 64, his only two 3D models from games prior to Smash are both spin-off titles, Mario Kart 64 and Mario Party. Mario Party render is too lanky and stretched out to be the Smash one, but the Mario Kart one nearly matches up perfectly. The colours are a slightly different shade from each other, but the way Luigi's eyes, hat, ears, eyebrows, hair, nose and moustache look are identical in both versions. The head for the Mario Kart 64 artwork appears to not be as long as the one seen in Super Smash Bros, but that could have easily just been an edit to accompany the new pose Luigi is making. So onto this pose then. It is my belief that Luigi's artwork in Smash 64 is based on this very piece of artwork right here. However, this is clearly not Luigi, but is instead Mario from Super Mario 64. However, this is likely the basis for Luigi's artwork, as comparing the positions of the arms and legs, as well as the shape of the hand, reveals that they are identical. The only real change, apart from the face, is that the Luigi render is thinner, because Luigi is thinner than Mario. So, the question now is, why did Luigi not get a render from his own artwork like everyone else? I have two theories behind this. The first is that he actually did, but it was from an unreleased piece of artwork related to Super Mario 64. Miyamoto has confirmed in a Water Asks that Luigi was planned for a potential co-op mode in Super Mario 64 at one point, however they could not make it work. The exact quote is as follows. Ever since Mario Brothers, you've had your heart set on making a multiplayer Mario game. You've tried each time, but it's never quite come together. Even with Mario 64, it started with Mario and Luigi running around together, didn't it? That's right. The screen was split, and they went into the castle separately. When they meet in the corridor, I was incredibly happy. <laughs> then there was also this mode where the camera is fixed, and we see Mario running away, steadily getting smaller and smaller. That was the remnant of an experiment we did, where Mario and Luigi would run away from each other. But you could still see them both. But we were unable to pull it off. 
It is unsure how far into development this got, but if artwork was ever drawn for Luigi for this mode, then it may be possible that we are seeing some of it here, as we know that Sakurai could have had access to beta imagery due to his render of Link. My second theory actually pertains to the way Luigi is in Super Smash Bros. 64. As I have said many times, the artworks chosen to represent the character's CSS icons are directly related to the way the character is portrayed in the original Super Smash Bros. So with Luigi, he is in fact the first clone character introduced in the Super Smash Bros. franchise, being a clone of Mario, and so it makes sense that even his artwork is cloned from a piece of artwork that used to belong to Mario. This artwork was most likely chosen as the source as it bears resemblance to one of Luigi's moves, similar to Captain Falcon's intro render being based on his in-game taunt. The render was most likely changed in the CSS for two reasons. The first was not to make it as cluttered with Luigi's arm taking up the whole right side of the icon, and second, to mirror Mario's CSS artwork, as Mario is looking into the upper right corner of his icon while facing the left, and Luigi is instead facing the right while looking into his upper left corner of his icon. This reflects his clone status once more, and also means his render is based on another Super Mario 64 artwork, as that is what Mario's render is based on. So, in conclusion, it appears that Sakurai's decision for which artwork to go for with his characters is primarily based on which game gets the most representation from that series in Super Smash Bros. For Mario it's Super Mario 64, for Donkey Kong it's Donkey Kong Country, and for Kirby it was Kirby Superstar. I hope this has been an interesting topic to listen to, and if you really liked uh, what you heard then please remember to like this video, as every little helps, and make sure you're subscribed and follow all of Source Gaming's latest videos if you haven't already. I really enjoyed researching this one, and I'd really like to hear your guys' opinion on it as well, so please leave that in the comments below. Do you think my analysis is correct, or did I miss a piece of Luigi artwork somewhere that proves that whole theory wrong? Let me know, okay guys? With that, have a nice day.